This video is my very first attempt at running a modern kitchen refrigerator and freezer chest off of the EcoFlow Delta Max. That's with solar input of three all powers, 200 watt portable solar panels run in series. I'm gonna find out how long I can make it off of the EcoFlow Delta Max while running these two appliances. So stay tuned until the very end of the video where I give you my two cents on the EcoFlow Delta Max, my experiences with this portable power station, as well as what I think its use case is best suited for. All right, so right now I have the freezer chest over to my right, right here. And I have the EcoFlow Delta Max and I have a UPS unit next to it. And the only reason I'm using that UPS is because it's a small battery and it allows me to switch the connections going to the freezer chest and the refrigerator between portable solar generators so there's no blip in electricity. That's simply there for my testing. And right here behind that is a yellow cable. This yellow cable goes all the way up to the kitchen and connects to my refrigerator because behind the refrigerator I have an extra outlet and that outlet was installed by an electrician so that I could run that connection down here to my solar generator so now I have the EcoFlow Delta Max I have a refrigerator and freezer hooked up to it what I'm gonna be doing next is I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna run three all powers 200 watt portable solar panels in series and I'm gonna run that connection through that grommet So the time now is 11.35 a.m. This is mid-August. And I have about 50% charge on the EcoFlow Delta Max. I have all three portable 200 watt solar panels installed in series. And I'm getting about 300 watts of input now. And what I'm going to be doing next is going back outside to better optimize these solar panels to be better facing the sun. And I'm going to be doing that periodically over the course of the days uh, to try and get the best input from the sun to see how long I could keep this going to power the refrigerator and freezer. So I just got back from better orienting the solar panels to the sun and right now we're getting about 380 watts of input. Both the refrigerator and freezer have shut off so we're just getting input now and the Delta Max is stating about three hours until full charge. So right now we're getting about a, four, a little bit over 400 watts of input, which isn't too bad. I actually uh, stopped using the kickstands. I used some sort of like uh, wood to prop them up so that they're at less of an angle, which better orients the solar panels to be more perpendicular with the sun. Here, I'll show you. So right now they're using less of an angle, and I don't think I'm going to have to uh, have all the cabling on this side. I can flip them around now because I'm not using the kickstands. So I might flip them around, which will give me better maneuverability for orientation. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. See right here, you can see all the clouds passing by. That little orange bar right on the bottom. Right now, we're getting about 420 watts. Goes up to like, yeah, I've seen it get a little bit higher too, like around 4, 470. And uh, estimated charge time. This should be topped off in a couple hours. So I feel like I'm at a good orientation with those uh, solar panels. I'm getting between like 450 and 480 watts. And uh, I'll give you a status update later on in the day once the sun starts to go down. So the time right now is a little bit after 4. The sun has gone down enough to where the solar panels are now shaded. Right now the EcoFlow is pulling in about 25 watts under shade. There is no draw from the battery because both the uh, refrigerator and deep freezer have shut off for now. And we're looking at about 93%, so I'd say that's not bad considering I started this around 11.30 a.m. in the morning. It was around 50% capacity, and now we're up around 93%. So this should last me until tomorrow. Alright, so it's 10 after 10 right now. 
I'm about to go to bed. We're at about 61%. And right now the freezer and refrigerator is going at the same time. So we're uh, consuming about 150 watts. I'm feeling pretty good because the refrigerator and freezer, I know this. I said this a couple times, but they don't run all the time non-stop. So the fact that it's at, they're both going right now, and I have seven hours left means that give or take, it's going to be like the, the refrigerator and freezer is going to shut off for about 45 minutes to an hour, turn on, shut off, turn on, rinse and repeat. So we'll see in the morning. Go ahead and pause the video and let me know what you think the percentage is going to be in the morning. Let's see if you can guess it right. All right, the time is now quarter of six. Dawn was like, I think, 5.30 around that time. So there's a little bit of light outside, just enough for me to get the solar panels reset up and oriented differently because I have some ideas to get some better output. And we're starting at the beginning of the day as opposed to around 11.30 a.m. yesterday. So we aren't getting any solar input yet, but I have these uh, solar panels slightly angled for when the sun comes up over the uh, tree line. These wooden pieces underneath can easily be reduced down to reduce the angle for when it gets closer to high noon. So I only have to come out here and shift these once. Right now the cloud cover is pretty clear. Little tiny bit of haze. You can see the moon right in the middle. Looking forward to see what this day has to offer solar wise. So I thought I'd show you this. Literally out of nowhere I checked my phone around 6.30 a.m. and it dropped all the way down to 1% and it just ran dead. So the Delta Max is showing zero and my UPS unit kicked on. So that means I have about an hour left of runtime on this UPS unit. Uh, this was a fail. I only have about 24 minutes left on the UPS unit and there wasn't enough sunlight to trigger the series of solar panels to come back on. I even tried disconnecting the two to get one oriented better to the sun just to at least get some sort of charge going and that did not work either um, by the time the sun was on its way up uh, it was hitting another batch of trees so what's my personal take on this video i thought literally i was going to get way more double maybe even triple the amount of runtime i think if that, I got 18 hours. And the only thing I could think of as to why that might be is the inverter inside of it. It is an absolute beast. And because of that, there's an insane amount of parasitic draw, meaning it takes additional power to the appliances that I had hooked up to the power station to even power the inverter alone. So if I were to go with an inverter like this one in the EcoFlow Delta Max, I would need at least double the amount of battery capacity, and that would put me up around the EcoFlow Delta Pro. If you had to run this on a sustained amount of time, you would also have to factor in maybe even tripling or quadrupling the battery power because of how powerful this inverter is, and the fact that not every single day is gonna be sunshine. You're gonna have rain, you're gonna have clouds, you might have to go a day without any solar input at all. Due to how powerful the inverter is in the EcoFlow Delta Max, I can only conclude that this unit is not made for long, sustained run times. In my opinion, this battery is only lithium ion. It is not lithium iron phosphate, so it's going to be a lot lighter pound for pound. This unit, the EcoFlow Delta Max, is best suited to lifting the unit up off the ground, bringing it over to something you have to run for a short period of time to be able to run it to get a certain task completed. If you were to go with something for extended runtime for like a refrigerator or a freezer, for example, my recommendation is to go with something that has a less powerful inverter in it because let's face it, kitchen refrigerators and deep freezers, they don't run even off of spike wattage or surge watts. They don't really run off of high watts anymore. I think the refrigerator I have, max wattage, when the DFAR is actually kicking on, is max about 300 watts. That's barely anything. So you really want to get a low-powered inverter so that there's less parasitic draw from the battery. One of the other reasons why I thought I was literally gonna get triple the amount of runtime off of this one power station is because I have three years experience with the LEOC power station, which I will be uploading in the near future to this YouTube channel. So make sure to go ahead and like this video if you wanna see more videos on the LEOC power station and my experiences with it.
I've been through so much with the Leoc power station over the past three years. I've been through power outages and I could have sworn I got way more runtime out of the Leoc as opposed to the EcoFlow Delta Max. And I think that primarily has to do with the inverter. So not only will I be uploading videos on the Leoc, I'm also gonna take you through my experiences with it, how I burnt out the inverter in the Leoc and how I went about replacing the inverter in the Leoc. So you're gonna get a full detailed long-term analysis and review on the Leoc power station.